Hi everyone, this is a continuation of the uh, reactive power uh, generator uh, experiments and um, in this experiment uh, in the previous video uh, we were hooked up to the generator and making the induction motor uh, function on the output of the generator through the circuit on reactive power and uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, attach it to the grid through a variac to uh, show you to demonstrate the circuit uh, the effect on the circuit uh, of imp uh, increasing the um, voltage so on the uh, generator here since it's only a 110 volt version uh, I'm kind of limited of what I can do and like you could see the torque on the shaft was uh, very minimal I could stop it by just you know applying pressure on it and uh, what I want to show you here though is if you have higher voltage potential uh, you will actually have more uh, power at the uh, shaft without actually uh, increasing the uh, input power as well which is uh, in watts so I'm attaching this to the grid just for demonstration purposes okay this research is about a generator uh, feeding the circuit it's not about grid feeding the circuit so I'm really making that clear if anybody does this kind of thing it's your responsibility and uh, I have nothing to do with that that is not what I'm teaching uh, or demonstrating here <clears throat> so uh, the circuit is identical uh, there is no changes except uh, like I said we're just going to use the grid temporarily to show uh, to demonstrate what higher voltage potential can do uh, this variac uh, will take uh, 120 volt grid voltage and will give me somewhere about uh, 180 volts uh, output and uh, that will be good enough to get an idea of what 220 volts for instance uh, or 240 volts would do if you had a 240 volt uh, uh, generator head and uh, that will actually make that generator or this uh, induction motor much more powerful and that's uh, what this test is about and only that so uh, it is your responsibility to be responsible with this and to think wisely of what's going on and if you don't understand what these electrical components are do not experiment with them because they're very dangerous and you could kill yourself and I'm also not responsible for your death so all these warnings are there these are just for experimental purposes to demonstrate the uh, possibility of using reactive power to operate a generator in a loop mode and that's what this experiment is about okay so with all those warnings done we are now going to start this up and what we'll do is now I'll just raise my variac I've got it uh, hooked up to uh, the little uh, watt meter there and again this is just for exhibition purposes it's not necessarily truly accurate the scope will be the more accurate thing and let's uh, raise that so that we can go back to the same uh, input voltage what our uh, generator was able to do I think our end generator can do somewhere around uh, so I'm raising it there somewhere around 100 volts and uh, I'll just adjust that so that we've got somewhere around 100 volts there <clears throat> okay we'll leave it just at uh, 108 so this is what our waveform uh, looks like uh, with the circuit functioning and, and going through the induction motor uh, at this time uh, but there is no uh, action on the uh, uh, on the uh, shaft here because you have to start you have to kick start this uh, motor for uh, it to uh, to get going and that's what this little uh, relay circuit uh, flip-flop uh, relay circuit is is about so um, again I've got uh, three probes attached I had to uh, move over to a hundred times probe uh, for the input voltage because a ten times probe won't be able to display uh, voltages above 120 volts 
So people in the 220 volt uh, grid will need a hundred times probe to be able to, I believe, if your scopes are made the same way, I don't know, maybe they're different there. Uh, but anyways, here in Canada, uh, I need a hundred times probe to be able to see uh, voltages higher than 120 volts. So that's the only change that I've made. The uh, shunt resistor, when it's upside down, is uh, exactly the same. Uh, the cap bank is exactly the same. So we've got uh, 10, 20, uh, 10, 20, 30, 35 microfarad there. So that same transformer, uh, I've got probe number three across uh, the coil here. Again, my uh, ground is left disconnected because this is our re ground reference and basically uh, that's the other side that's just going pretty well here. So again, the same situation. I'll activate the motor uh, temporarily for a fraction of a second on the grid just to get it started. And once it's started, the form, the waveform will change. So I'll go ahead there and click that and I'll give you a view of the waveform, what happens when we start it. So as you see, it's, it's all different now. And uh, <clears throat> let's see here. So this is our um, probe uh, across the coil. So as you saw, uh, as you can see now, the uh, voltage has kicked up. And this is the voltage that we now have across the uh, induction motor coil. Uh, there is our uh, voltage from the grid. So we're about the same range as the, uh, the alternator was on the generator. There's our uh, current across our uh, shunt. And there is our map. That map doesn't come through too well, that red. Uh, and there is our means on the map. So we're like millivolts in the negative. So now let me show you here. The shaft is turning. And I'm now applying a little bit of pressure there with my finger. I can't stop it with that. But let me show you what happens as I apply pressure. This is, this is what the activity is. So as you see, the uh, waveform of the uh, uh, motor coil is really affected by a load, right? So if I keep holding it and apply more pressure, it collapses. And that's when the induction motor stops. It's still running through the coil, but there is uh, nothing that uh, can keep it up. So. Uh, now the next thing what we'll do is we'll uh, raise the uh, voltage on the variac and you'll see now what the effect of doing that is. So again, let's uh, kick start this here for a second. So our motor is now again turning and I'll show you on the tachometer what it's uh, turning at here. So we're a little higher because actually our voltage is a little higher. We were at 1740 on the uh, once it was uh, powered by the alternator head from the generator. So we're at 1792 or somewhere around that range. Okay, so the big moment. Uh, this is what happens when we start uh, raising the voltage on the uh, variac. Okay, uh, the other thing too is, um, let's have a look here at our uh, display here for uh, entertainment purposes here. That is what the uh, plug-in watt meter is, uh, the Variax connected to that. Uh, this uh, wire here, that's what's going to my momentary uh, kickstart for the uh, grid voltage to get that motor started. And uh, that uh, is plugged in here, that extension cord. So I've got my watt meter in there and the momentary start. And that's what's co connected there. And then this here is uh, my uh, isolation transformer where my scope is uh, plugged into for isolation purposes. So now, uh, so we've got 27 watts there, 28, somewhere around there. And now I will start increasing uh, the voltage. And, and 
and you're going to start hearing the motor making a different sound, which is more the sound that it makes when it's connected to the grid, where at that time it has uh, a lot of torque on the shaft. And if you start to see, you'll see that my voltage now is increased. We're now at about 165 uh, volts there. Sorry about the out of focus here. Let me see if I can fix that. Okay, so we're about 169 volts there. And uh, we're still very much out of phase. And everything, I'll just drop it down quickly here. You see? And then raise it up. Everything is uh, working symmetrically. Uh, you know, we're getting uh, more voltage uh, to our motor coil. See, we're up to 103 volts. Uh, my uh, variac now is maxed out. So now we can get 113 volts uh, across our motor coil. And we're now inputting 183 volts uh, from the uh, grid. And uh, you know, it's, it seems to be very efficient. And for entertainment purposes, if we look back at our uh, watt meter, uh, we don't seem to be uh, consuming any more watts. But like I say, uh, it's kind of strange, and uh, this has been also demonstrated uh, by some other experimenter. Uh, the watt meter does not work uh, linearly, and uh, the math uh, kind of tells the story on the scope. So now I'm see reducing the voltage and the uh, watts. So now we're back down to about 100 volts. And the watts are back up. So as I increase uh, the voltage uh, to the uh, motor, as I'm changing the input, <coughs> increasing voltage, you can see the uh, power is seemingly going down. Um, but the big, big, big thing here is now I cannot, you know, well, I can still stop that shaft. But as you see now when I let it go, it's now turning on its own. So we've more than, I'll give it a kick start now, because it, it couldn't do that on its own before. So now I'll just give it a kick start to start it. So now it is started, but we have, we've got about four, four to five times the amount of power at the shaft now. And if we look at our, our waveform, here I am applying the same amount of pressure that I was uh, when I stalled the motor. So you don't see that much of a, an effect on the uh, waveform of the motor, which is this one here, the purple color one. The blue is our current across our resistor, yellow is the uh, voltage, and red is obviously the mass. So look how the uh, mass uh, stays uh, pretty, pretty steady, and it's just a function of, you know, me when I apply a load, of just the interaction between current is uh, reducing and the um, and then the motor coil uh, is also uh, changing so that's uh, about all that I uh, want to share at this time and uh, if I had a, an ability of sending 220 volts uh, in there uh, we would have a huge amount of uh, torque uh, and that's what this uh, video is about to, uh, to demonstrate that. And uh, that's it. Thanks for uh, your interest and uh, hope uh, this can help uh, with your uh, generator, uh, reactive power generator uh, experiments and tests. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, bye now.